thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I will have the honor and pleasure to interview uh, Tomer from uh, Calibra. My name is Oriel, I'm a CEO of Zango. And uh, there is so much to talk about, I'm gonna jump right in. Um, there is, I hope, you know, that you know, we have 24 minutes, so let's get, let's get started. Tomer, just to, 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 get, to get on the ground, just briefly tell us who you are, what's your role in Calibra, how you got there. First of all, very excited to be here. Uh, what I don't understand is how come they all have these headphones and we don't. And what's the difference between the blue ones and the orange ones? Do you know? Uh, it must be like the, br the blue pill, red pill, like on Matrix. Is something like that, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah. Well, I have to get one for my kids. Uh, really happy to be here. Um, I joined Facebook and, oh, thank you so much. Um, I joined Facebook and Calibra about 18 months ago um, to be COO of Calibra, Chief Operating Officer. Before that, I was almost nine years in PayPal. I started in PayPal here in Israel, uh, leading PayPal Israel, uh, post the acquisition of uh, a company called Fraud Sciences that developed technology and methodology for fraud detection. And over time, uh, took over more and uh, moved to the US. Uh, and uh, this is where I met David Marcus, my partner and boss, um, and uh, became uh, PayPal's chief risk officer and headed operations for PayPal. I was chief data officer, uh, was in charge of compliance, which is a topic I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, so really learned a lot there. Before PayPal, I was with a startup. I was with McKinsey. I was for quite a few years in, uh, in the Israeli Defense Forces. So that's me. That's great. So let's, let's start with just the basic because there is so much uh, noise around this project. And unless you've been in a cave, there is no way you have never heard about Libra or Calibra. So just in your own words, not PR words, in your own words, what is Libra for? Why does it exist? What do you mean my own words? There are no such. Uh, all I know is PR. Um, <laughs> so whatever you can say. So uh, Libra is, uh, first of all, Libra doesn't exist yet. It, it, there is so much uh, debate and so many people are sharing opinions. Libra, as you know well, is, uh, is now at the stage of prototyping and getting feedback from the world. Uh, Libra is a global, a new global cryptocurrency um, backed by a, a blockchain, a proprietary uh, Libra blockchain. Both are still in development. I think what's more, most important about Libra is its purpose. Uh, Libra is about uh, bringing financial inclusion to the billions of people that need it. Um, I think um, being part of the financial services ecosystem for many years now, it's um, amazing that while technology has brought us so much transformation, I would even say revolution in access to information, in commerce, in communications, uh, it hasn't done the same thing in financial services. It has done a lot, but not the same. You think about the fact that 10 years ago here in Israel, um, we had to pay, I don't know, the equivalent of 30 cents to send a text message locally. Today I can send not just a text, but a, an image or a video to anywhere in the world for practically free. The, the same thing has not happened in financial services. We have 1.7 billion people worldwide that are unbanked, don't have access to uh, any financial services provider. Uh, this is what Libra is about, changing that. So you come from... You came from PayPal, right? And David Marcus also came from PayPal. You have chosen to use a blockchain technology to build Libra, but you could have done the same without it. What was the benefit of choosing a blockchain technology to actually build Libra? I think it's the, the magnitude of aspiration and the realization that for a, a currency to be successful, it cannot be controlled by a single entity. And this is what blockchain technology brings us. I'm, by the way, honored to be part of this community now and 
we are standing on the shoulders of giants of Ethereum and Bitcoin and others uh, in realizing that for something to become a public utility, something that people trust, and I'm using that word despite the trustlessness nomenclature, um, it, ha it cannot be controlled by one and it ha needs to be transparent and at the same time given the importance of security and uh, in, in financial services, it also needs to be secure. And blockchain brings, it's, it's, a it's a technology or a group of technologies that brings a solution exactly for that balance. Th there is a lot of confusion though. Like people still strongly associate Libra, and let's talk also about Calibra, uh, to Facebook, although it's very clear from your white paper that this is not the case. So can you like give more color about the fact that it's not just about Facebook, who else is involved, and why it's not a Facebook project? So first, the, the confusion is, is natural. I wouldn't say it's confusion. I think it's a combination of confusion, and even I, I acknowledge the fact that some of it is mistrust, right? It, it is a project that came, that was initiated and was developed in Facebook. Still today, we have, uh, we have open sourced the, the, uh, the Libra code that we have developed so far and released it on a, as a prototype, as testnet in uh, about three months ago. Uh, and we have many developers like you, and we can talk about that later, that are contributing to the code and building applications on top of it. Uh, but clearly, still 90% of the code is, was built by, by Facebook uh, engineers, by Calibra engineers. So we are in a gradual transition. I think the decision was that this Facebook initiated project is gradually and we hope uh, by launch going to be owned by as many people as the wor in the world and that's the reason that we open sourced it, that's the reason that we have uh, created the Libra Association uh, that is forming and will include many ent entities starting with the 28 entities that we currently have and will grow to, to many more. Um, at the same time, we're also building a Facebook service, as you mentioned, Calibra. Calibra is the name of the team or the subsidiary that Facebook created uh, to uh, focus on Libra and the Calibra digital wallet. It's also the name of the, of the product, the uh, custodial wallet that allows uh, people, anyone, and I think given the aspiration to serve uh, billions of people, it has to be something that is useful, usable, easy to understand, uh, provides people the type of services that they're used to, like uh, protection from fraud, like uh, um, password recovery, like 24 by 7 customer service, things that uh, modern financial services do provide uh, and we think most people will need. Uh, Calibra is going to be just one of we expect many digital wallets, including custodial wallets and non-custodial wallets that will operate on top of Libra. Uh, but it is uh, Facebook's main investment from now on. So I, I want to zoom back a little bit on, on Facebook motivation, right? It was, it was a surprise when Facebook announced the project. And um, I'm trying to understand, I'm still trying to understand, and not just me, I think many people in the scene and in the media, what was Facebook motivation to get into that space? They basically own uh, a large part of the media business today or the ad business, Wh what brought them to, to that industry which is really tangent to, to where they are today? So first, just uh, I, I would disagree that we own a big part of the ads business, business but that's probably uh, another conversation. Um, okay. I, I, uh, the, the way we view Facebook's goal and, um, uh, and purpose is to create connections among its community, build relationships, strengthen the way, the, the way people interact with each other. We see transacting, transferring money as an extension of other types of communication. Uh, you send a message, you send money, these are all part of one relationship that people have and we want to be able to offer that to the world. Um, we also uh, Facebook plays a very significant role in supporting small businesses all over the world. There are 70 million small businesses that the primary way of interaction with their customers is through Facebook. This is another way for us to be able to support them and by that support the global economy and, and 
enhance, we, we hope to enhance that and provide greater um, uh, s services, broader services to this community as well as the, the community of small businesses that will be built by accessing the unbanked and the underserved. So sending money is just another type of message that you send to someone, right? Which is somewhere where Facebook is very strong and very good at. I don't know whether it's just another. It is another way. I think, you know, sending a video and sending a text are technologically very different and they uh, may convey, and you think, think about 10 years ago, again, the thought of sending a video, video among two people was un, unheard of. It, it, t today is day to day. And I think, yes, it's in another type of communication, another bond between people. And this is pay Facebook's business. So you guys have chosen probably the hardest path to launch what you guys are launching. You could have gone like a much easier way, which is like what Facebook has done for years, is launching something, asking for forgiveness after you launch, but you went another path. You announced it and you have now all those regulators going after you. Last week, you know, and if you were following the news, you know, at least for once France and Germany agreed on something they want to stop Libra. They will manage to get that happening. You know, France and Germany agreeing on something. So all those regulators are going after, after what seems to be a, a consensus to want to stop this project. What do you think is happening really uh, behind the scene? And why do, you do, per, do they perceive this project as a threat? So first, you're really asking uh, several questions. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start with why we announced as early as mid, mid, last year, mid this year, while our plan is to launch next year. Uh, I expect sometime between the end of uh, the first half to the end of the year, something like that. Uh, that's at least our intention. Why, why announce so early? I think that there are mainly two reasons. One is in order to create an open ecosystem we have to give people an opportunity, people like you, an opportunity to build on top of it, to exper experiment with it. Uh, and that's, that's the only way you can do it, right? So, so opening a prototype, starting having an open dialogue with developers, uh, giving them the tools, uh, creating a, an ecosystem that is open and competitive. As I said, we expect uh, to have many other wallets and potentially other applications on top of Libra, including at day one, for that to happen, we need to give people an opportunity to build. So that's one reason. The other is to have the dialogue that we're having now. We expected th this uh, exchange to be difficult with regulators and policymakers. It's not, it's not coming as a surprise. But for us, it's a, it's a feature, not a bug, right? It's an opportunity to have dialogue with regulators and policymakers so that we get to a place in which uh, we all feel comfortable. Our goal is to expand uh, access, but our goal is also to uh, support stability of, of the world economic system. Our goal is to actually um, provide greater safety, uh, greater security to financial services, and we want to work with regulators and policymakers. I don't want to talk sp about specific uh, uh, regulators and, and policymakers. I think specifically the announcement by the French and the Germans uh, just uh, this weekend uh, was, uh, if you read it completely, you get a different sense compared to what you just read uh, from, uh, yes. from this press uh, the tweets were uh, headline. more elaborate than that. But, but I, I, would, I would put, I mean, would leave it uh, for the moment. I think in general we have a constructive uh, intense uh, dialogue with regulators and policymakers. I've been to, I can say that I was two weeks ago in Korea because this was public and I had uh, dialogue with regulators there and there are many other regulators that we're in touch with to get FINMA, to a place. Right? You're talking with, uh, with and FINMA. And of course, uh, FINMA made an important uh, uh, announcement last week that was kind of misc saying that they would view uh, Libra uh, as a payment service uh, or payment system and would uh, welcome uh, Libra uh, um, filing for alliances as such. So, so from that perspective, we're continuing to have uh, dialogue with, uh, with regulators and I think we will land in the good place. This is hard. We have a, we have a formidable aspiration. I think the task that it, we took on ourselves financial inclusion, exp expanding access to financial services to billions of people 
it's not just the 1.7 billion unbanked. There are a couple of additional billion that are not getting access to financial services because of um, sufficient access because of cost. Uh, I think it's a very important task. We need to balance it with the need in security, the need in uh, in uh, fighting to fight financial crime. Uh, getting the balance point is not easy, but we're working on it and having open dialogue with regulators about it. So, so you you did ask me while we were talking to ask you tough questions, <laughs> right? And I and I can uh, can assure you it was open to it. But I I need to ask that question. Uh, Facebook has been exposed to multiple scandals involving data privacy, security breaches, and uh, we're not going to get back on it. And I know it's not a Facebook-only project. You made the case. But I have to ask, what guarantees will um, Calibra will be able to provide knowing that it's a project started and built by Facebook? And you know, this question is uh, on the lips of everyone in the industry. So uh, I, we're taking security privacy very very seriously we have committed to separating segregating data financial data from social data not to share uh, data back with the rest of uh, uh, Facebook um, unless for purposes of fighting uh, uh, crime and um, it's actually hard it's a lot of investment because you're right Facebook was not built under the premise of uh, of separating, uh, and it's we have to build a lot uh, from the ground up, um, and uh, but we are committed to it. We're committed in the level of investments that we're making in both security and privacy, and uh, in, and also in being very transparent about what we do and don't do. You're asking what guarantees. Uh, I think the one thing that I mean, I can I can say as many words as you'd like, but there are some people that are not going to be convinced, and it's their right. Um, I, I think the one thing that uh, creates guarantees is consistent delivery. We should consistently deliver on this promise, and we will. And given the fact that Libra as an ecosystem is a competitive one, where people will have choice. If we don't deliver, if we disappoint people, don't deliver on our promise, they will leave us. And one of the key attributes of the Libra ecosystem is interoperability, is the ability to easily move your assets, your funds from one wallet to the other. Of course, the ability not to use an intermediary if you wish to. So all these are attributes that will make, and we will be judged every day by our customers. So your, your code is open source. You've open sourced Libra from, from day zero. Um, let, let's like zoom in a little bit on developers' activity. Uh, why have you done that? What kind of activity do you see happening? What kind of contribution do you see there? Um, I know it's still early, but I'm sure you've already seen a few things. We are seeing, so first of all, it's uh, as I said, uh, making the, um, the code open source and making the ecosystem, the Libra ecosystem open is one of the key attributes of, or one of the key reasons we think it will be successful. It what, what entails competition, it's what will make Libra a public utility rather than private money, uh, which is uh, deemed for failure. So we're doing this because we think this is the only way to be successful. Uh, so far, we are seeing the Libra Association is seeing uh, a lot of interest. Many groups uh, working on applications to build on top of uh, Libra. Many are having uh, intense dialogue with engineering teams. Still, many of the engineers are, st are still uh, Facebook employees, so we see a lot of that happening. But a lot of dialogue on GitHub and elsewhere. Uh, I've I've heard about ample uh, projects. I'll I'll mention two uh, that I I just heard uh, two days ago about an Israeli group that I honestly don't don't I know I'm not sure they have a name and I forgot if if they have a name. But working on an application, a marketplace over Libra for farmers in Africa. So for me, that's exactly the type of things that we're looking for people to build. And there's another, there's a group, a uh, startup called Zengo, maybe you heard about them. I heard. Uh, that <laughs> is uh, building a, a digital wallet. I think you know a little more about, about that specific application than me. Why, why didn't you share a little bit? Uh, just, I, I, we're supposed to talk about you, not about us. But for the audience, asking why am I here today is because we've been involved very early on in, in the development contribution to Libra, bo both at the code level, but also we're building a... Uh, I think one of the first, if not the first, uh, Libra wallets uh, for testnet, so it can be tested today. But it, 
do you see also um, things that go beyond like indev indev independent developers, like large companies getting in touch with you, wanted to work with you, um, and not just like you know the mainstream developer community? I, I don't want to naturally reveal anything that uh, another company is working on, and if, if whenever they want to, they will reveal. I, I'll just say that we have, uh, anyone can have a look on the web, which are the 28 members. Uh, Calibra is just one member of the 28 me uh, members of the association. W which companies are there? Naturally, uh, many of them are uh, strong, uh, capable technology companies. And uh, one of the reasons for them to join is the ability to build on top of uh, Libra. So uh, I would expect that we will see from them and from other companies a lot of investment in this space. But again, I can't comment specifically. And, and honestly, I don't know. Uh, most of it, which is the way it should be, because uh, we are uh, all uh, members in the association working to promote uh, the ecosystem and the network, but at the same time, competitors on top of the network, and that is the way it should be. So you're arriving to um, an industry which is crowded in terms of number of blockchains, of number of stable assets. Um, you're bringing a different flavor to that industry. So my question is the following. Who is Libra's competition? So, so, so first on, on the, uh, on the um, blockchain industry, uh, as I said, I think it's, uh, it's a great honor to be here. And we are leveraging work of many individuals, groups over the last 10 years uh, since uh, I think if you read Satoshi, a lot of what he is writing is financial inclusion. So, so I think not just technologically, but even from ideologically, we may not agree with everything that has been written in the last 10 years, but there's a lot that we share. Uh, just in terms of the difference, I think, wh why have we chosen to build uh, a new blockchain? I think for several reasons, I, I'll just mention uh, two. One is uh, performance in order for... Um, uh, uh, a currency to be to serve billions of people, hundreds of millions of people. Uh, it has to have similar performance attributes as um, as, uh, as uh, Visa, Mastercard, uh, payments network. So, latency, absolutely, speed of uh, settlement, as well as uh, scale, thousands of transactions per second. These are necessary attributes to be relevant. For, for all these people. So that's one reason that we decided to build a new blockchain. And I think the other one is stability. You mentioned stability. Uh, and our aspiration to be a global currency uh, that is uh, of low volatility has led us to uh, uh, not to peg Libra against a single currency, but at uh, uh, instead against a, a basket of uh, currencies. You're asking about competition. Um, I would say uh, our key competitor is cash. And I'll, I'll explain why cash. Uh, I have nothing uh, personal against cash, but cash, when people use cash, it is, um, uh, um, it demonstrates the limitations of uh, modern financial services. There are many reasons for using cash, but most people in the world use cash because of limitation of access, mainly because of cost, uh, accessing financial services. And when we see the use of cash diminish, it means that we are successful in including more people, in expanding access to financial services, and hence, not cash itself, but cash as a proxy for financial inclusion is the competitor. All right, so let's cash more bits, if you say. I see we have only 30 seconds uh, left. So related to that cash question, uh, the question was asked ask during the hearing to David Marcus, I will ask you the same. Uh, would you accept? your salary to be paid in Libra? So first, the atmosphere here is much nicer than the, the hearings. I, I appreciate you being uh, nicer than uh, uh, over that. there. <laughs> uh, but uh, personally, absolutely. Um, Libra, as I said, is pegged against a basket of currencies that, you know, I'm actually, uh, I, I don't see any reason why not to. So I'll wel I would, wel would welcome being uh, compensated with Libra, uh, but it's, it's also important to clarify. We don't have, and it is something that was uh, uh, rumored, we don't have any plan to start uh, paying with Libra. 
uh, in Facebook uh, salaries of Calibra employees or Facebook employees not in the near future, so that's not part of the immediate plan. But personally, I would have loved to be compensated in Libra when it exists, by the way, not so, beforehand. So the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're done with timing. Where people can find out more about uh, the activity of Libra in Israel? Yes. So thank you for, uh, for asking this question. We have, uh, people don't necessarily know that, but uh, almost a third of uh, the Calibra uh, force today here is here in Israel. Our main two sites are uh, Menlo Park and Tel Aviv. And in Tel Aviv, we're currently uh, building the fraud, the compliance, the uh, uh, customer service, the, a lot of the backend elements of the Calibra wallet. And we're expanding very rapidly. We already have a relatively big team, and we're going to expand it significantly next year, uh, including uh, recruiting more types of individuals, not just software engineers and data scientists, but researchers, security. We will have functions that not only focus on the Calibra wallet, but also on the Libra blockchain, because we plan to continue to be contributors to that, to the, uh, to be open source co uh, contributor to the to Libra. So. A lot of exciting stuff happening here in Tel Aviv, and we welcome anyone to find uh, jobs that are posted uh, and will be po continue to be posted on the Facebook Israel uh, website. So it doesn't sound like France and Germany are going to stop you for now. <laughs> this from your own words. No comments. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tomer, and uh, it will be a pleasure to discuss with you.